Welcome to Watch Chat, where we chat about watches and other facts of life. After several months of owning this watch, I must say that it's still not the perfect Apple. The Omega Seamaster Aquaterra World Timer, reference number 220-1243-2203-001, is a mouthful in both its name and serial number. Despite its lengthy identification, the World Timer was only introduced recently in 2017, limited to 87 pieces. The unlimited stainless steel version here was introduced in 2019. You have the option of pairing it with a stainless steel bracelet or a blue rubber strap, as seen here. The watch is measured at 43mm in diameter, 14.1mm thick and 49.8mm in length. Whilst on paper the watch seems huge, on the wrist, the watch is pretty wearable. Before we check out the wrist shot, let's first check out the watch. It is common knowledge that Omega and Rolex has an unspoken rivalry among their designs. When you think about the Omega Seamaster Diver 300, naturally, Rolex Submariner comes to mind. The Omega Speedmaster, the Rolex Daytona. The Omega Planet Ocean, the Rolex Deep Sea. You get my drift? So, when I think about the Omega World Timer, I can't help but to compare it with the Rolex Sky Dweller. I mean, they are both above 40mm in diameter, both GMT watches, and both have a 24 hours disc in the center of the watch. But what makes me gravitate towards the Omega apart from the more affordable price difference, granted that it does not have an annual calendar like the Rolex? Well, let's find out. You have the standard Aquaterra symmetric case design here that is brushed on the side which I think is a smart design for easy maintenance whenever you place the watch on its side. A polished finished side will end up getting it scratch. To compensate it with some shine, it has a polished finish on the edge of the lugs running around the case, and then brush finish in the inner parts of the lugs. There is a slight raise before the slide on the bezel, all of which are polished finish. There are no crown guards on this watch, giving it a very clean look. The conical crown is pretty sizable. But because the watch is measured at 43mm in diameter, the overall look of the watch and crown fits well. The notch at the side of the crown isn't the easiest to grip, but it is still better than a lot of other brands out there. It is a screw down crown, giving it a 150m of water resistance. The design of the crown has a brush finish matching the side of the case, with the Omega logo that is polished embossed on it. The back of this watch has an open sapphire case back with anti-reflective coating that vividly displays Omega's very own self-winding master chronometer 8938 caliber automatic movement with coaxial escapement. It is COSC certified, meta certified, anti-magnetic of up to 15,000 gauss, free sprung balance with silicon balance spring, rhodium plated finish with Geneva waves of arabesque, 25,200 VPH, 39 joules, and 60 hours of power reserve. All Omega watches are designed to withstand shocks corresponding to a 1 meter drop on a hard wooden floor, which has an equivalent force of up to 5,000 G on the watch head. The crystal on the front is also sapphire and is dome-shaped with anti-reflective coating. The dial on this watch is a masterpiece. The center of the dial has an image of the Earth as seen from the North Pole with the word Seamaster laser on it. The Earth here is created on a grade 5 titanium. In case you didn't know, a grade 5 titanium is able to withstand a wide range of environmental factors including seawater and can withstand temperatures of up to nearly 800 degrees Fahrenheit. The plate here is laser ablated to create the crystal blue ocean. The contrasting colors of the Earth's surface are obtained naturally by the laser's chemical reaction. To me, the Earth image here is the most important reason, if not the sole reason, 
why I pulled the trigger. The Earth is 3D crafted. It's like Omega decided to place an artwork, not a painting, but a sculpture. A rock looking sculpture on the DAO as part of the decor, aesthetic, or even a symbol of what this watch represents. Now that's attention to details, and that's a stunner. Surrounding the globe is a 24 hours disc that is divided into night and day. The dark blue being the night and the sky blue being the day. Unlike the Rolex Sky Dweller, the 24 hours disc here has a hazelite crystal ring giving it an additional glossy look on the disc. Expanding from there is the popular tick deck pattern blue dial. If you've noticed, the tick lines here are vertical and curvy around the earth, resembling the meridians you see on a globe. Staying consistent to the design cues, the opening on the date window that is located at the 6 o'clock position also has a curvy cut. The font on the date is also consistent with the font on the 24 hours disc. Although this is a world timer, it only has 24 cities named around the rehaul and the chapter ring instead of 37. This ingenious design helps to make the dial looks less busy. As for the 13 other missing time zones, the globe helps to provide that information. As mentioned earlier, this here is an image from the North Pole. Hence, the land on the left here is where Canada and North America is, and the land on the right is where Europe, Russia, and Asia is. If you're able to spot a city or a country using the map and the 24 cities on the watch, you can actually draw an imaginary line from the center of the watch across the globe to determine the time of the location. It is that functional. If you've noticed, these cities are painted in different colors. The red on London represents the Greenwich Mean Time. Cities that are in white are places with daylight savings, and the cities in sky blue are places without. Instead of having Geneva on the list, Omega replaced it with Benin, which is the city Omega is based. A very personal touch there. The applied indices, our minute and second hands are all treated with blue glowing gloom. They are brushed on the top but polished on the edges to add the blink on them. The tip on the second hand has a pointed red unlike the rest of the Aquateras. To tell the time of the cities on the chapter ring, one just need to look at the printed sky blue markers around the 24 hours disc. For the cities around the Rehort, the applied indices double up as a marker for those cities. Again, another smart design that clears up the clutter on the dial. The blue rubber strap here has an integrated polished link, which gives it a very nice outlook. The broad viewing design on the center of the strap reminds me of beach chair. Notwithstanding that, I'm sure this is still more than acceptable for one to wear it in a formal event. The stitching on the side is sky blue and the back of the strap has some speed bumps that makes the strap more breathable when wearing it. The claps here has a twin trigger release. It's easy to open but yet pretty secure. It doesn't open up unless you press them both together. The claps curves well on the wrist and the excess strap is well hidden and tucked underneath the strap. On the wrist, there is some weight to the watch but it isn't that heavy due to the lighter rubber strap option. As you can see, despite it being measured bigger on paper, the watch isn't too big on my 16cm circumference wrist. I do not think this is the perfect apple. In my humble opinion, I think there are still areas where it could still improve. For starters, I would prefer the name and logo on the dial to be applied instead of painted on. Secondly, it's the date adjustment. To adjust the date, you can either pull out the crown to position 1 and adjust the hour hand independently leaving the second hand running, or pull the crown to position 2 and adjust the minute hand which stops the second hand. Regretfully, the date starts tilting at 10pm and completes the turn with a snap at 11.54pm. Now that's disappointing. 
The date change can also be reversed. At position 1, the date jumps back at 8 pm. At position 2, the date will again start tilting at 10 pm but complete the turn with a snap at 7.45 pm. Thirdly, it's the size of the date window. Because the date window is vertically narrow, a double digit display will cause the date to look pretty cramped up. That is why in all of Omega's advertising materials, a display of the 8 is preferred instead of a 28. Notwithstanding these shortcomings, I still really really love this watch. The attention to details, the superb finishing, the thought that goes through the design, the 5 years warranty, the extended servicing intervals due to the coaxial escapement, meta certification, need I say more? This is truly an underrated piece. It is symmetrical and has a very clean design. I would even be so bold to say that it is perhaps the best looking world timer out there and it looks more expensive than it is. Finally, I can now say that I have the whole world in the palm of my hand or attached to my wrist. All I need now is the moon. LOL. So, what do you think of this watch? Is it an underrated piece? Or do you have a different preference? Let us know at the comments below. Anyway, if you like this kind of video, please like, share, subscribe and hit that notification icon and I'll really appreciate and promise to upload more videos like this. Until the next one, thank you for watching.